In the late 1940s, a radio comedy captured the hearts of American listeners. Its name? My Favorite Husband. Starring the effervescent Lucille Ball and the charming Richard Denning, the show offered a humorous peek into the lives of Liz and George Cooper, a married couple navigating the ups and downs of domestic bliss, but beyond its laughs and quirky situations, My Favorite Husband laid the groundwork for a revolution in American television, leading directly to the creation of the iconic I Love Lucy. You see, Lucille Ball's undeniable talent and comic timing on My Favorite Husband didn't just earn her legions of fans, it also caught the eye of CBS executives eager to bring her humor to the burgeoning medium of television. However, Lucille had one non-negotiable condition. Her real-life husband, Desi Arnaz, must play her on-screen spouse. CBS was skeptical. A Cuban band leader as the husband of an all-American girl? It was unconventional, it was risky. Yet it was this insistence that gave birth to I Love Lucy, a show that broke molds, shattered expectations, and became a beacon of innovation in television history. I Love Lucy introduced the multi-camera setup, filming in front of a live studio audience, and even the concept of syndicated reruns. But perhaps its most enduring legacy is the way it celebrated the comedy and complexity of marriage, love, and life. Themes first explored in My Favorite Husband. So, the next time you find yourself laughing at Lucy's antics or marveling at the timeless humor of I Love Lucy, remember the radio show that started it all. My Favorite Husband wasn't just a stepping stone for Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. It was the spark that ignited a revolution in comedy, bringing laughter into the living rooms of millions and forever changing the landscape of American television. We present My Favorite Husband, a new series based on Isabel Scott Rorick's gay, sophisticated Mr. and Mrs. Cougar, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning. <laughs> Ten years ago, the town's most eligible bachelor, George Cougat, married socially prominent Elizabeth Elliot. The lavish wedding kept the society columns all over the country in copy for weeks. The New Yorker said, Bride and groom were dressed to the nth degree of smartness. Best man was a polo pony. <laughs> the Hearst Papers said, The bride and groom were dressed handsomely in attractive comments from guest Douglas MacArthur. <laughs> and the Reader's Digest said, The bride and groom were dressed. <laughs> well... After the honeymoon, George sold his polo pony, bought a stylish suburban home, took the first job that came along, fifth vice president of a bank. And now the Cougats are just George and Liz, two people who live together and like it. George says, When I married Liz, she didn't know a thing about keeping house. She couldn't cook, she couldn't sew, she couldn't clean. But later she overcame this lack of domesticity in a most ingenious manner. Liz says, I got a maid. <laughs> And now, let's take a peek at the cool guys. It's early morning, and there's husband George at the breakfast table. But where's wife, Liz? Oh, there she is upstairs in the bedroom with Katie, the maid. Well, this is certainly unusual. Liz is getting into a formal evening gown. Let me check again. It's only five minutes after nine. Well, surely there's a reason for wearing an evening gown at this early hour. Oh, just a little more, Katie. Can you get the zipper up now? Yes, ma'am. Oh, the zipper's up. Oh, how does it look, Katie? Would you consider it too slinky? Well, there's hardly enough of it to tell. <laughs> if you'll pardon me, Mrs. Cougat, I've seen more cloth on a rope for cheese. <laughs> It isn't as skimpy as all that. Now, where's my corsage? Oh, here it is, ma'am. I'll just pin it on here. No, uh, maybe here. Oh, well, what's wrong, Mrs. Cougar? There's no place to pin it. <laughs> I'll get you a gown that has a little more to it, Mrs. Cougar. Uh, but then... Then what, Kitty? You are having your portrait painted today, aren't you? Yes. 
Well, then maybe you'd better wear the gown you have on. Why? Well, as long as you're paying for a portrait, you might as well have as much of you in the picture as possible. <laughs> no, Katie, we might move to Boston someday, and I wouldn't want my portrait banned. <laughs> oh, here's a more sensible gown, ma'am. Uh, have you told Mr. Cougat about the painter coming today? Not yet, Katie. I'll tell him at breakfast. Now hurry and get me out of this tight thing. I feel like a ten-inch weenie in a five-inch roll. Good morning, George, darling. Good morning, Liz. You're looking very... George, what's wrong? That evening gown. Well, you've seen me wearing an evening gown before. Well, I've seen you wearing galoshes, too, but not at breakfast. <laughs> of course not. It never rains under the table. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, the reason I'm wearing this gown is because I'm going to have my portrait painted. The artist is coming this morning. Having your portrait painted? Mm-hmm. What in the world for? Well, Alice Sturm had herself sketched, so... Alice Sturm, I might have known. The old story of keeping up with the Joneses. It's nothing like that, George. This is entirely different. This is keeping up with the Sturmses. <laughs> Darling, when Alice Sturm gave a party for an opera star, we had to give one for the Hall Johnson Choir. When Alice goes to Catalina, we have to go to Hawaii. Now, believe me, the day Alice Sturm has quintuplets, I want to be in Mexico. <laughs> Well, what about me? <laughs> and just where is this masterpiece going to be painted? Right here, and by a very good artist, too. His name is Damon Welch. He'll be here in a little while. I get a kick out of those artist characters. I can hardly wait to see him. Uh, he'll probably be wearing a pink beret and have a rose clinched between his teeth. Long artistic fingers hanging down and sticking in the tops of his shoes. No. <laughs> I heard Damon Welch is different from other artists, George. They say he's very big and strong and muscular, like, uh, who's that rugged, tall actor in the movies? You know, the one with the big arms and broad shoulders? Marjorie Maine. <laughs> no, uh, Victor Mature. Oh, well, don't be silly, Liz. Artists are all the same. They wear berets, live in attics, and smell of spiders. Hello, George. Liz. Oh, it's Corey. Come on up, Corey. Barbara's here. Bachelor Deluxe, Damsel Delight. The kind of man you'd like to marry your sister. If you hated your sister. <laughs> How are you this morning, party boy? No party last night, George, but did I meet a beautiful creature. She had a smile like Lana Turner, a voice like Dinah Shore, and she kissed like Paulette Goddard. What do you do, date her or buy tickets to her? <laughs> Don't speak lightly of this woman, Liz, for I think that at last, Corey Cartwright is in love. You, Corey? Yes, George. I feel that this is the real thing. I think I shall marry this girl. Corey, that's wonderful. What's her name? Where does she live? Darn, I knew I forgot something. <laughs> hey, Liz, I just noticed you're wearing an evening gown. Yes, do you like it? It's nice, but isn't this awfully late to be getting home? Oh. <laughs> Liz is having her portrait painted, Corey. Some artist named Damon Welch is coming over this morning. Damon Welch. You've heard of him, Corey? Heard of him? That's all Alice Sturm talks about since he sketched her. I hear he has big blue eyes, curly hair, muscles galore, a tan complexion, and stands about 12 feet tall. <laughs> really now, Corey, 12 feet tall. Maybe it is a slight exaggeration, but I understand that before he painted portraits, he used to paint rooftops. <laughs> without a ladder. <laughs> well, anybody could do that if they had a long brush. Or... Or a short house. <laughs> well, what do I care what he's like? Excuse me, I have to make a phone call. Who are you calling this early, darling? The time operator. My watch has been acting up again. Well, maybe Corey has the right time. No, I left my watch home on my other wrist. At the tone, the time will be 9.42 and one quarter. Hmm, 9.42. Have to be getting down to the bank. Right with you, George. I have a luncheon date with a girl who was a gorgeous blonde yesterday, and I'm anxious to find out what she is today. <laughs> Kiss me goodbye, George. Your kisses give me strength for the day. When Corey Cartwright kisses them, they stay charged up for a month. <laughs> Bye, darling. Bye-bye, Liz. Bye. Are you really going to the bank today, George, or are you just faking? 
What are you talking about? With that Damon Welch coming to your house today, I figured maybe you're going to sneak out and hide in the garage. Oh, I'd forgotten all about it. Doesn't worry me in the least. It would if you heard what Holly Sturm calls that artist. Why, what does he call him? A weasel with an easel. <laughs> Come on, get in the car, Corey. Hey, don't start the motor yet, George. The artist just pulled up in your driveway. Maybe we can get a look at it. Good. <laughs> I'm still betting he has a rose between his teeth. Uh, he's getting out of his car. Holy mackerel, George. He looks like the Empire State Building with a turtleneck sweater. <laughs> oh, he's not so much. I'll bet he pads that sweater with cotton. If he does, he must have the whole plantation in Uncle Tom's cabin under there. <laughs> look at those shoulders, George, and that chest. Corey, it doesn't take much to have broad shoulders and a big chest. All you need are muscles. Let's go. Did you see that thick neck, George? Those pretty blue eyes? Well, so what? My neck isn't as thick, maybe, but I have a nice neck. And look at my Adam's apple, Corey. <laughs> oh, that guy didn't have anywhere near the Adam's apple I have. <laughs> Oh, if there's anything that'll keep a home together, it's a big Adam's apple. <laughs> and as far as his blue eyes are concerned, my eyes are blue, too. Look at my eyes, Corey. See the pretty blue? Kind of hard to see the blue right now, George. Your face is so green. <laughs> woman, face to the left. I cannot paint your portrait unless you cooperate. Mr. Welch, I told you a dozen times my name is Elizabeth Cougar, not woman. Very well, Mrs. Cougar. Now be quiet, woman. <laughs> well, one consolation, at least you know what I am. Your dress gives you away. <laughs> I don't like your nose. I shall not paint it that way. But I like my nose. It's a good nose. Don't change it. I've had it so long now, it seems like almost a part of me. Be still, woman. You're very rough, Mr. Welch. Woman, you're looking at a man who's painted the forests of Oregon and at the same time worked as a lumberjack. Sawing, climbing, cutting, and chopping. One day, the man next to me was crushed by a falling redwood. I've seen many rough things. This is a man's world. That's why I'm rough. Did, did it kill him, the, the man the tree fell on? To coin a quaint old phrase, he was a real gone lumberjack. <laughs> You know, Mr. Welch, you and my husband have a lot in common. He lives a rugged life, too. What does your husband do? He's a banker. Oh. Well, that is rugged. It's plenty rugged. He goes to work every morning at ten and doesn't get home until after three. Just what's rugged about that? He has an uncomfortable office. <laughs> Liz, Liz, are you here? Oh, you're home early, darling. Hi, honey. Uh, how's the portrait coming? All finished, huh? <laughs> oh, no, Damon will be back tomorrow. Damon? You call him Damon? Yes, now. He was terribly cold at first, but he warmed up. <laughs> How warm did he get? Oh, George, I've just got to tell you all about him. You wouldn't believe that just an artist could have lived so much. Too bad he lived so long. What'd you say, dear? Yeah, I, I, I said uh, too bad he had to run along. You know, men certainly are misleading. Take Damon, for instance. There he is, an artist, but he's worked in the Oregon forest. And believe it or not, he's chopped down giant redwood trees. Well, I cut down the tree in the yard, the one that made the lawn so unsightly. That wasn't a tree, dear. That was a laundry pole. <laughs> well, it was a tree once. Did you notice Damon when you were leaving this morning? He came in right after you'd left with Corey. Mm, yes, I think I did. He was struggling to get his car door open. Didn't seem to have much strength. A tall, unhealthy-looking chap, as I recall. A padded sweater. Damon? Oh, George, I don't think so. He's huge with big muscles and a terrific tan. Yes, Liz, but I I'm sure that under that tan there's a naturally pale face. <laughs> George, what are you looking for? Oh, nothing. Oh, say, look at this. My old photograph album. Look here. 
This picture of me at the beach. <laughs> you noticed the muscle? Oh, yes. That was the day you and Jimmy Paterno and Holly Sturm and the whole gang made the human pyramid. Yeah. It takes a lot of strength to support all those men. Yes, it does. Look at my muscle. Oh, there you are, right on top. <laughs> oh, it uh, takes a lot of strength to stay on top. There was quite a breeze that day. Here's, <laughs> Here's a picture I like. You and me in a rowboat at Simmons Park. Look, your sleeves are rolled up. Say, your arms were pretty big. Of course. <laughs> of course. I can't remember why I was rowing. <laughs> well, I was saving my strength for the potato race. Are you sure you love me, Liz? Oh, silly. Of course I love you. Why shouldn't I love you? Kiss me. Feel those strong arms around you? Mm-hmm. I'm plenty strong, Liz. Way back in kindergarten, I used to beat up all the little kids. I'll, be I'll just bet you still could. <laughs> Kiss me again, sweetheart. Liz, are you positive you love me? I'm the only one, nobody else? Oh, don't talk this nonsense. Just hug me tighter. Make believe I'm a tube of toothpaste and pop my cap off. I feel great now. Oh, George, you know, I was thinking today, you don't have any hobbies. I believe I know of an interesting one for you. No hobbies? I have my bird collection. Six starlings and a dicky bird. <laughs> what did you have in mind? Why don't you take up painting as a hobby? Painting? Oh, Liz, I'm going to bed. Going to bed? Don't you want your dinner? I won't need any dinner. I'll just go upstairs, pull the covers over my head, and eat my heart out. <laughs> You are listening to My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning. This is the story of my favorite husband, George Cougat, and his favorite wife, Liz, who, like most married couples, alternate in making each other first happy and then miserable. Well, at the moment, Liz is in the middle of having her portrait painted by the handsome and virile artist, Damon Welsh. This makes Liz quite happy and George quite miserable. Now George thinks this is quite wrong, and chances are he's quite right. And so he's decided it's quite time he did something about it. It's the next morning. Quite. George, darling, you aren't eating your breakfast. Oh, I'm not very hungry, Liz. Didn't sleep last night. I'm going to stay home today. Stay home? George, are you ill? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I'm sick. Awfully sick. What's wrong? Oh, I, I, I don't know, Liz. Maybe it's, it's painter's colic. Painter's colic? Well, that is, the inside of my mouth feels like a brush. <laughs> I'd better call Dr. Buell. What do I want with a doctor? Well, you just said you were sick. Oh, yeah. Uh, call a doctor. Oh, same and Katie. I saw him coming, Mrs. Cougar. Oh, good morning, Mr. Wells. <laughs> good morning, woman. Step aside and let genius enter. I wish he'd slam the door on his genius. <laughs> good morning, woman. Good morning, Damon. This is my husband, George. You may just call me man. <laughs> George isn't feeling well, Damon. I'm going to call the doctor. What's wrong with him? He looks well enough. Trouble with you, Cougar, is that soft, decadent living has finally caught up with you. You should get out of doors, do some exercises. Run the mile, do some chin-ups, push-ups, chop some wood, mow the lawn, pull some weights. Throw that barge, lift that bale. Oh. <laughs> Please call the doctor now. I'm worn out. George, let me have a look down your throat. Certainly, Dr. Bill. Ah. Uh, hmm. Doc down there. <laughs> uh, uh, don't swallow, George. This is my best flashlight. <laughs> there is nothing wrong there. Exactly what seems to be the trouble, George? Well, Doctor, it's... 
I feel kind of things. First it, it starts, then it stops, then it goes again, then it backs up, and then it twists completely around. Uh, what does it sound like to you? A woman driver. <laughs> Come on now, George, tell me what's wrong. Well, Doctor, you see, Liz is having her portrait painted by some artist who, who has muscles so big they, they get up and walk around, and I just... Oh, I believe I can diagnose your case now, George. Acute jealousy-itis. Is, is that anything like borderline anemia? <laughs> <laughs> jealousy-itis is serious only if it isn't checked early. Fortunately, I believe I have with me the very thing you need to snap you out of it. <clears throat> Miss McCarthy... I just happen to have my nurse with me. Nurse? I don't need a nurse. Yes, Doctor? Marianne, this is Mr. Cougat, our newest patient. I tell you, I don't need it. Oh, how do you do? <laughs> uh, forgive me for not standing up in bed, but I only have on the pajama tops. <laughs> is the uh, patient ill enough to require a nurse, Doctor? Well, he said he wasn't. Uh, what about it, John? Oh, I ain't long for this world. <laughs> Sit still, woman. I cannot paint your portrait unless you relax. I don't make moving pictures, you know. Well, when are you going to paint in my hair? You still have me bald-headed. I don't like myself bald-headed. I look like my mother was frightened by Guy Kibbe. <laughs> I'll paint in your hair when I see fit, woman, and not a second sooner. Until that time, you'll remain an egghead and like it. Damon, do you ever smile? I laugh sometimes. My sense of humor is a bit unusual, however, not on the beaten path. Well, what's funny to you? Well, <laughs> I laughed heartily when my friend Chadwick fell from the roof of the school in Paris. <laughs> Did Chadwick see the humor in Oh, he screamed. <laughs> yes, I'll never forget it. Fractured half the bones in his body. <laughs> yes, he must have been all broken up. <laughs> Miss McCarthy, did you hear that? My wife and the painter were laughing down there in the study. What could they have been laughing at? You have a steamboat in the house, Mr. Cougar. Steamboat? Well, of course not. Well, then they couldn't be laughing at Fulton. Oh, I'm serious, Miss McCarthy. I don't like them to be laughing. I'm going downstairs. Hello? Hello, darling. What are you doing out of bed? I, uh, well, I heard some laughing. Uh, what was all the laughing about? Oh, Damon was telling jokes. Oh, how nice. Mind if I stay a while? I know one person who objects. I cannot paint with an audience. What a horrible painting. George. No, no, let him criticize. All genius must be criticized. But I still do not want him around. Out. Take your linted bathrobe with you. <laughs> well, as long as you're busy, I'll go back upstairs. Goodbye, darling. Well, goodbye. Yes, goodbye. Nice trip. Be sure and write us. Oh, Damon, you know something? I think my husband came downstairs because he's jealous. <laughs> jealous? Jealousy is stupidity. Oh. Yes, I guess he could be jealous. Well, I'm glad he's jealous. <laughs> oh, it makes me feel that I'm wanted. You are. I want you to sit still. Uh, you, uh, you never get jealous of Mr. Kugat, do you? I mean, the fact that he's upstairs right now with that attractive nurse. That doesn't faze you in the least. Of course not. Good old faithful George. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what? Damon, that was George and that nurse. Oh, so? You aren't worried about good old faithful George, are you? Certainly not. I'll be right back. Where are you going? I got to see a man about a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. May I come in? Yes, Mrs. Cougat, but you mustn't stay long. I have a naughty boy on my hands, and I don't want him to get excited. <laughs> That's why I came up. How are you, George? 
Oh, it's awful. I just had a relapse. I accidentally plugged my electric heating p- pad into the radio, and H.V. Kaltenborn got in bed with me. He's delirious. Yes. You better go, Mr. Stugart. Yes, I'll, uh... Goodbye, George. Miss McCarthy, uh, wouldn't you like to come downstairs and boil a few thermometers or something? <laughs> I'll be right here with Mr. Cougar. Well, bye, George. She's gone now, Mr. Cougar. Why were you playing sick? Because I wanted sympathy. Lots of sympathy. <laughs> you know something, McCarthy? I think Liz came up only because she was jealous. She must have heard us laughing. You know what that means? My capacity of a registered nurse, I'd say she has clean ears. <laughs> it means she loves me and worries about me. She's jealous. <laughs> then you need have no further worry over the painter. None whatever. He'll be laughing again soon, but I won't worry about it. I wonder why they aren't laughing. <laughs> McCarthy, they're not laughing. Doesn't that please you, Mr. Cougar? No, they should be laughing. Where do you think you're going? I'm going down there and find out why they're so darn quiet. Where is he? I'll break him in half. He's gone, George. Gone? He, he's not here anymore? I had to get rid of him, darling. Why did you have to get rid of him? Because I knew that if he left, you'd stop playing sick, and then Miss McCarthy could get the heck out of here. <laughs> oh. Were you a little uh, jealous of Miss McCarthy? Of course not, but... I know you were jealous of Damon. That's ridiculous. George. Yes, Liz. Who do we think we're kidding? So he uh, left, huh, George? Yes, Corey. He left. And George was really very nice to him. How lucky you were, George. Suppose, instead of going quietly, the man with the big muscles had gotten tough with you. Oh, Corey, you're just trying to stir me up. No, seriously. What would you have done if the painter had wanted to fight? Oh, I, I'm sorry, George. I shouldn't embarrass you this way in front of Liz. If Damon had wanted to fight, George would have fought, wouldn't you, darling? Wouldn't you, George? Why, well, certainly. If I had his phone number, I'd call him up right now and tell him a thing or two. Oh, I have his phone number, dear. Here. Oh, well, thanks. When Damon answers the phone, I'll catch you, George. Hello, Damon. This is George Cougar. I've changed my mind about being nice to you. If you want to fight, just come over here whenever you feel like getting knocked for a loop. You got anything to say to that? At the tone, the time will be 9.27 and one quarter. Well. George Cougar. Kiss me. Kiss me this very instant. Why right now? Because you've got your dander up, and you're just dandy with your dander up. In just a moment, Lucille Ball and Richard Denning will be back with us. Here's a friendly suggestion that may mean a lot to your own happiness. Why don't you call your family together one evening soon and say, is there anything else any of us can do in cooperation with others for the good of our community? You may find that somebody will come forward with the news of a community project that you haven't heard of. Maybe it has to do with scouts or 4-H clubs or Red Cross. Well, there'll be an opportunity for service, something you'll like to grab hold of. For you know that what you're doing is more than helping make your life and your families and your neighbors better. By positive action toward improving the place where you live, you help preserve something we prize highly. That's freedom. You show that you agree with the statement that freedom is everybody's job. George, are you asleep? No, darling. I'm not asleep. Do you love me, baby? Yes, I love you. How much? Lots. Well, in terms of pounds, how much do you love me? 
Three pounds, six pounds, seven pounds. Twelve tons. Oh, I love you a hundred tons. Yeah, you have a bigger truck. <laughs> George, no matter what happens, will you still love me, even when I'm old? I'll still love you when you're old. Will you take me out? Yes, dear. I'll wheel you around the block every day. <laughs> George, something strange happened to Katie tonight. Really? What was that? Well, tonight around 9.27, Katie picked up the phone extension in the kitchen and heard a man shouting at the time operator. Good night, George. <laughs> My Favorite Husband has been presented through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>